Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, My dear students Our course is Human Resource Management in Education And today we are going to discuss our lecture number 7 Which is Designing a Training Plan The topics we will discuss today These are the objectives of training plan What is the introduction of designing a training plan what is the framework for training plan? What is training plan model? What are components of training plan? And at the last, we will discuss the conclusion. What are the learning objectives? After discussing this topic, you people will be able to design a training program framework you people will be able to understand the uses and applications of a career development program. Now we discuss what is training plan. NEO 2005 has stated that training and development is including activities that help cultivate employees skills, knowledge and abilities. Through the training and intervention measures, the human resources departments help organizations to establish a high-performing, active and engaged workforce. It means that through training, the organizations cultivate their employees. Their employee skills are cultivated, their knowledge is enhanced and abilities are created through training plans. By taking these measures, the human, depart the human resource departments of different organizations develop a high performance. They develop active and engaged workforce in the organizations. Due to training and development inseparable, we can say there's the training and development these two words can be separated. These two words are generally used to define employee with each other in continuously improving to achieve a series of organizational goals when training and development is being given to the employees then the goals of the organization can be achieved very easily and this training and development process should be continuously then we go to second point if without training and development programs organization may not be able to realize their full potential we can say that when training and development programs does not exist that does not exist in any organization in any organization then what is the potential among the people, among the personnel, it cannot be realized. In most organizations, training and development task is to deal with human resource management personnel. This relationship depends on everybody's communication, cooperation and clear set of job skills as defined by a job description among all levels of organizations then the introduction for training plan we move to another point this is also referred by new 2005 when organization values can make employees eager to achieve their goals then employee development can be implemented to make this kind of circumstance happen now we move to the framework for our training plan the first step in the training process is to create a training framework that will help to guide for the training program it means that the first step in any training program is the framework which will be developed the framework is like a model that will help during the training plan information on how to use the framework is included in this section when developing a training plan there are number of considerations 
training is something that should be planned and developed in advance you can see flow sheet diagram in this slide the first point is need assessment the second point is learning objectives third point is learning style then comes delivery mode and then the fifth point is budget then delivery style means how to deliver <clears throat> then comes audience consideration after that there is content development then comes timelines after that there is communication of training then comes measuring effectiveness in the previous slide you have seen the flow sheet diagram all the all those 11 points in that diagram we can see over here this is need assessment learning objective consideration of learning styles delivery mode budget delivery style audience content timelines communication measuring effectiveness of training so very first point is need assessment we will discuss here the need assessment what is training needs what is training needs assessment this is an assessment that looks at employee and organizational knowledge skills and abilities to identify and gaps to identify the gaps or areas of need once the training needs are identified then you need to determine or you need to develop objectives to be accomplished by the training you can see the first point over here which is the first step in developing a training program is to determine what the organization needs in terms of training there are three levels of training needs assessment first level is organizational assessment level is occupational assessment and third level is individual assessment what is organizational assessment in the need assessment process in this type of need assessment we can determine the skills we can determine the knowledge and we can determine the abilities a company needs to meet its strategic objectives this type of assessment we are discussing the organizational assessment in the organizational assessment things such as changing demographics and technological trends are considered overall this type of assessment looks at how the organization as a whole can handle its weakness while promoting strengths when strengths are being promoted then weaknesses can be easily handled handled or what are issues they can be handled very easily in the need assessment the second point is occupational assessment this type of assessment looks at the specific task skills knowledge and abilities required to do jobs within the organization and the third point is individual assessment in the individual assessment looks at the performance of an individual employee and determine what training should be accomplished for the individual the second point in this model is learning objectives in the learning objectives it is described that learning objectives or learning outcomes it sounds like a straightforward task that's where is the challenge lies you only have a couple of sentences to sum up the learning outcomes of your course sometime employees fail to see the point of training then clear learning objectives are the best way to communicate to employees the tangible benefits of the course the first point you can see in this slide after you have determined what type of training should occur 
learning objectives for the training should be set. The second point is a learning objective is what you want the learner to be able to do, explain or demonstrate at the end of the training period. Then the third point here is good learning objectives are performance based and clear and the end result of the learning objectives can be observable or measured in some way. Now we have some examples of learning objectives. Perform a variety of customer needs analysis using company software. Understand and utilize the new expense tracking software. Explain the safety procedure in handling chemicals. Be able to explain the types of communication styles and strategies to effectively deal with each style. The third point in this model is learning styles. In learning styles, understanding learning style is an important competent component to any training program. For our purpose, we utilize a widely accepted learning style model. Recent research has shown that classifying people into learning styles may not be the best way to determine a style and most people have a different style depending on the information being taught. Here we can say that three most common learning styles. What are these three common learning styles? These are visual learning styles, these are audio learning styles and the third one is kinesthetic, kinesthetic learning styles. What is visual learning style a visual learning learner usually has a clear picture of an experience in the auditory learners an auditory learner learns by sound in the kinesthetic learner a learner learns by developing feelings towards an experience the fourth point is the delivery mode The delivery mode, depending on the type of training that needs to be delivered, you will likely choose a different mode to deliver the training. Any orientation might lend itself best to vestibule training, while sexual harassment training may be better for web-based training. When choosing a delivery mode, it is important to consider the audience and budget consideration. In the delivery mode, we can say that training is a set of a systematic process designed to meet learning objectives related to trainees, current or future jobs. These process can be grouped on the phases of need analysis, design, development, implement and evaluation. There are three categories in the delivery mode. These categories are knowledge, skills, and attitudes. The fifth point is budget. Establishing a training budget for your organization ensures you allocate appropriate funds for employee development over the course of a year by planning for training expense and linking them to strategic objectives, you typically award cost-cutting measures that could reduce your training budget if executives perceive it is overhead or superfluous. Ensure that your employee get the skills and knowledge they need to perform effectively on the job. The budget, it is very important in the training part how much money do you think the training will cost? The type of training performed will depend greatly on the budget. If you decide that web-based training is the right delivery mode, but you don't have the budget to pay the user fee for the platform, this wouldn't be the best option. Then the sixth point in the training and development processes delivery style 
taking into consideration the de delivery method what is the best style to deliver this training it's also important to keep in mind that most people don't learn through death by PowerPoint they learn in a variety of ways such as auditory kinesthetic or visual role plays and other games can make the training fun for employees it means that role playing and games should also be included in the training part by considering this what kind of ice breakers breakout discussions and activities can you incorporate to make the training as interactive as possible it we can say that it depends on the trainers how expertise they have how much expertise they have many trainers implement online videos podcast and other interactive media in their training sessions this ensures different learning styles this ensures that different learning styles are met and also makes the training more interesting then the seventh point is audience by considering your audience that is an important aspect for the training how long have they been with the organization or are they new employees what departments do they work in knowing the answers to these questions can help you develop a relevant delivery style that make for better training we can quote an example over here if you know that all people attending the training are from the accounting department examples you provide in the training can be focused on this type of job if you have a mixed group examples and discussions can touch on a variety of disciplines then comes content development the content you want to deliver is perhaps one of the most important part in training and one of the most time consuming to develop development of learning objectives or those things you want your learners to know after the training makes for a more focused training think of learning objectives as goals what should someone know after completing this training it means that content development or the content during the training procedure that is very much important what kind of content is being developed is this content valuable for the trainees or not or it is useless for the trainees in the development of content usually requires a development of learning objectives and then a brief outline of the major topics which will be covered or which is desired to cover with the outline we can fill in the major topics with information based on the information what kind of things can be developed these may be modules these may be powerpoint slides these may be activities these may be discussion questions or some other sort of learning techniques then in the training and development procedure the ninth point is timeline for some type of training timelines may be required to ensure the training has been done this is often the case for safety training usually the training should be done before the employee starts in other words in what time frame should an employee complete the training a timeline can serve as a useful useful guideline for getting an employee training plan accomplished come with the components of your employee's training plan divide the process into phases for example it can be sales training customer service training safety training etc 
another consideration regarding timeline is how much time do you think you need to give the training perhaps one hour will be enough but sometime training may take a day or even a week i think most of you people have faced many trainings Developing a dependable training schedule allows for better communication to your staff, results in fewer communication issues surrounding training and allows all employees to plan ahead to attend training. The next point that is communication. Once you have developed your training, your next consideration is how you will communicate the available training to employees. in a situation such as orientation you will need to communicate to managers to staff and any anybody involved in the training the timing and confirm that it fits with their schedules communication training or communication skills training refers to various types of training to develop necessary skills for communication individuals undergo communication training to develop and improve communication skills related to various roles in any organization if it is an informal training this might involve determining determining the days and the times that most people are in the office and might be able to participate because employees use mondays and fridays respectively to catch up and finish up work for the week these days tend to be the worst of the training then there comes measuring effectiveness after we have completed the training we want to make sure our training objectives are met one model to measure effectiveness of training is the kirkpatrick model donald kirkpatrick evaluating training programs this is the reference before you which if you want to search you can do from here in his model there were four levels that is reaction second point is learning third point is behavior fourth point is results the first point is reaction how did the participants react to the training program then comes learning to what extent did participants improve knowledge and skills then comes behavior did behavior change as a result of the training and the fourth point is results what benefits to the organization results from the training so my dear students now we go to the conclusion at the last in the conclusion part we can say we all know that training and development programs are important for an organization to develop them by a training program allows us to strength and weaknesses those skills that each employee needs to improve our development program brings all employees to a higher level so they all have similar skills and knowledge this helps to reduce the weaknesses now we can see over here when a child was born he required constant touch of parents till he stood on his own feet this is very good example for training an organization do powered by creams of the society still training is required due to rapid technological upgradation and change in working methods every day training aims at continued self development of the employees employees are expected to develop themselves continuously in any organization when the employees in an organization are developed from time to time with all updating knowledge they definitely that organization will grow to a greater height at the end 
we can say that the employees who receive the necessary training is more able to perform their jobs the training will give the employees a greater understanding of their responsibilities within their role and in turn build their confidence this confidence will enhance their overall performance and this can only benefit the company or organization employees who are competent and on top of changing industry standard help the company hold a position as a leader and strong competitor within the industry.